Hello, Mr. Ferrante here, and I wanted to do a live demo of tonight's homework. Tonight's homework is the Creature Friend, where you build your own custom creature, and there are custom constructors that take in parameters to change the look of the creature, and there also are helper methods that also have parameters. I'm going to go over all those things with a live demo. So this is our live demo, and here we go. Before doing anything, you really need to design your um, drawing on paper. It's much, much easier later on. I did mine in Microsoft Paint, and here it is. So here's my cat. In this demo, I'm only going to do the black parts here, not the gray body. But the idea is I already have kind of an idea of where I will place the different parts of my cat and also the proportions. So I've got a circle for the head, and in my notation, you can see here that I'm planning on having this little 45 degree angle go up, and I'll come back at slightly this would be 90 degrees, I'll come back a little bit less than 90 degrees, just back until it roughly hits the head. And over here I'll have a 30 degree angle, that's 30 degrees from kind of horizontal, and again I'll come backwards a little bit sharper than 90 degrees. Uh, on the eyes, um, I'll explain all that stuff when I get there, but the idea is that I have it all planned out, and I know exactly where the pen will go to, that way there's no guess and check. You know exactly where to move the pen to, and you know uh, all the physical details, so you're not guess and checking. So here we go. All right, off to Blue Jay to start my cat. So new class, I'll call this, I'll call it cat. Yours will be called creature, but I'm gonna call mine cat. And I'm just gonna delete everything in here, just start over again. Because really this is designed for the new people to our class and I wanna slow down a little bit. So class design, classes consist of three main parts. Um, well, first of all, public class, in this case, cat. So one thing about classes is that in Java, it's a standard that classes are always uppercase. So if you've noticed, when we make attributes or variables, we always use lowercase for the attribute or object name. But classes are uppercase. So if you have a lowercase c for creature here, then make sure that's uppercase, and that's by convention. It's not wrong, but in Java, other programmers, when they see an uppercase, they're gonna think that that's a class name and if you see a lowercase, they're going to think it's a variable. So stick to conventions. Now inside any class, and right now this compiles, by the way, because it's a complete class, but there are three sections that we need. There's the attributes, and the attributes are the variables that describe the class. There are the constructors, constructors. The constructors are used to build the object and initialize attributes. And finally, there are the methods, which are the actions that the object can perform. So let me pause the video and I'll put in little definitions there for you. All right, I'm back and I've added now some definitions. Attributes are the variables that describe the state of an object. And that's where we're gonna go ahead and look at back at my picture and decide what attributes do we want. So I'm gonna say that the radius of the head will be one attribute. That way I can define how big or small the head is. So we're gonna add head radius, that'll be integer. I will say, let's see, um, well, yeah, eye radius will be from the center of the eyeball to the edge. And then we're gonna say pupil is gonna be this part. So I'm gonna say the eye is the outer circle and the pupil is the, in the, pupil is the inner circle. So we're gonna have both eye radius and pupil radius. And let's say um, nose radius, kind of same thing. And then um, mouth radius and whisker length. And then whisker length will be the last thing I'll do. All right, well, yeah, there's probably also ear length, I think, so. Let's do ear length as well, and we'll go with that. All right, that is plenty of, of things to decide there. Um, there's also gonna be colors, so I guess there's gonna be a lot more later on, but for now, we'll start with that. This is certainly enough customization right there. Let me save this. Okay, constructors, the idea is that when someone builds a new cat object, we have to decide as a programmer, what's the default length of all these um, parameters? And so, 
that's what our constructor will do. So again, constructor is a special method. You can always make it public. And there's no return type. So you just say public, the class name, in my case cat, and then empty parentheses. And the constructor, they are always public. They would never be private. You don't ever say like public void or public int. With methods, you would say something like public int if it returns an integer. Or you might say public void if this method returns nothing. But for constructors, you don't say any kind of return type. That's special with constructors. And for the parameter list, I'm going to leave it blank because this is a default constructor. Default meaning the user doesn't pass in any information. Instead, we decide what all these values will be. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole set of information. I'm going to pause the video and just go ahead and decide some default values. I'm also going to get rid of all this int stuff, and I'll explain why I'm doing that in a second. All right, here you can see I've chosen values that are going to be the defaults to build a default looking cat. And another note that I thought of when doing this is that these are ellipses for the eyes, and I only define the radius. So what I'm going to do is say that the radius is this horizontal radius, and then I'm just going to say that the vertical radius uh, will be a certain proportion of that. Like maybe the th vertical height will be, um, you know, 150% more than the, the width. That way it'll be a consistent looking eyeball, but you can still change the size overall. So that's going to be a decision I'll make uh, later on. All right, now that we have our attributes defined and set, we're going to go ahead and start a draw method. Actually, take it back. Let's do the other constructor because if someone doesn't want these default values, they need to build a cat with a custom constructor that can accept um, any number of parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and make a second constructor, also public cat. And this time, inside the parameter list in the parentheses, we're going to have customizable attributes. So we're going to have, for each attribute here, I'm going to make a variable that can initialize these attributes. So actually down here, I'm going to go ahead and copy this section. And instead of hard coding the values, we're going to say that these are equal to, I'll say, um, head rad. You don't want the same exact variable name because Java will get confused between the two. And so I'm going to say head rad. We'll just abbreviate all of these. And again, let me just go ahead and pause the video and abbreviate them right now. All right, so I've got the head radius attribute will be equal to whatever the person passes in here. And then same thing for each attribute. We're going to update these with these values. And the values are going from this side. They're being stored into these variables. So for example, nose rad, whatever that value is, will be stored into the attribute. And now let's fill up our parameter list with all of these values over here. So the person using this can create a cat with all these different values. So uh, head radius, the int i radius, and again, I'm going to pause the video and just continue on my own. All right, let me drag my window bigger so you can see all this. And so I have here my parameter list, and it's all these variables. So if someone calls cat, this is just an example, and they say something like, you know, cat um, bob equals new cat, and then in the parentheses, they're going to pass in values for all of these different variables. For example, maybe they pass in for head radius, they pass in 100. And maybe for eye radius, they pass in 50. And they've just put values for all these. This part will go in the driver, so that's where you're going to see it. But for now, we're setting up the definition in the first place, so it's all variables. The numbers will be in the driver when you actually specify the values for each of these guys. All right, if I scroll over, you can see that I have a parameter for each of these attributes and that this constructor takes each of the parameters and it uses those values to update the attribute. So that's what additional constructors are generally for. They take parameters and set up the object in a more customized way than the default, which chooses all the values for you. So that's why we have a default and then also a second constructor. All right, now onto the methods. So the one method you need for sure is a draw method. And so we're going to say public uh, void because methods all have a return type. In this case, just draw. And as I said earlier, methods are always lowercase. And so methods are lowercase. 
um, attributes are lowercase. Only class names, with which cat here, cat is the class name, only class names are uppercase. Everything else is pretty much lowercase or a camel case. It starts lower, it goes upper for new words. But draw is a method, and therefore it's lowercase. And number two, you always have to decide if a method returns values or not. Void means this method just does an action. It doesn't return information. We'll do returning information later on uh, in this unit or maybe the next unit. All right, so fine, onto the draw method. So here we go back to my PowerPoint. We have our attributes, awesome. We have both constructors, a default and a custom constructor. And now we're defining our draw method. So here's the most basic way you could do the draw method. You can make comments and say, draw the head uh, outline, and then go ahead and do that there. And then perhaps draw the eyes, draw the eyes, and then maybe draw the whiskers. And then underneath these comments, you would put the actual code. Like you'd say pen dot, you know, do stuff to do this, maybe pen dot more commands. But the idea is that you're gonna put all the instructions below the comment. And so that's a good way to start, but we're gonna go ahead and improve, in fact, we will start this way, but then we're gonna improve this by a lot and show you why you don't really want to go this direction in your future code because it's not uh, mature coding. I mean, it's, it's what you would start with, but there's a much better way to do less work for you. So this is the longest possible way to do this, but we're gonna go ahead and start that way. So let's go ahead and start our draw method. So back to my design. It looks like for the outer circle, it's really just a matter of taking the radius. And if we wanna make a color, we can fill a circle with a certain color. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and do that. Actually, I take that back. I still don't even have a drawing tool or a sketch pad set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and set up my sketch pad and my uh, drawing tool. All right, I'm done doing that. Here are the changes I made. I imported GP Draw. I assume you've done this before with Draw House. I've added two attributes to keep track of the pen that we're drawing with and the paper or sketch pad we're drawing on. And in both constructors, it matters that they're in both, you have to initialize both the sketch pad and the drawing tool. So it has to happen in both constructors because if you make a cat with this constructor, it's gonna run this code only. You gotta make sure that you set up a pen and paper. Whereas if you do this method, then again, Java doesn't go back here and use this. It's gonna use whichever constructor that you call. So you have to make sure to set up a pencil and a, a sketch pad in both constructors. And I've done that now. Now that I have a pen that's been created, I can go ahead and use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw the outline of the head by saying pen dot, let's do, let's keep it white for now. We can always call the, the cat in later, but um, so fill circle. And then uh, the radius was head radius. That's good enough for the head. All right, then for the eyes. All right, so look at my uh, my diagram here and what I'm saying is this little line that I've got horizontal I was thinking to myself for the design that I'd make this distance from the center to here be half the total radius so my eyes will always be up half the distance of the radius of the uh, head so the radius is from here to here and my eye height will just be half of that that's gonna be my center and then the distance that I move over will simply be the radius of the eyeball. And then finally, the height will be uh, a certain percentage bigger than the radius. So if I want ovals that are twice as tall, something like this perhaps, whatever the radius is, I'll make this radius to be twice that radius. So that's 2R and this one's just R. So I'll use proportions to get my eyeballs. All right, so let's go ahead and go into our code and define um, just the outline part of both eyes. And then we'll do the pupils later on. All right, so there's a head, draw the eyes. Now first, I need to pick the pen up, pen dot up, and then move it. So let's go back to my drawing. All right, to move the pen, I'm gonna go ahead and move um, up half the radius, and then over the radius of the uh, oval, or the eyeball. So pen dot up, pen is already facing upward, so just pen dot forward. 
and we're going to move forward by half the radius, so head radius divided by 2, and then we're going to say pen dot turn right, and then pen dot forward, and that was a I, I radius, I think it was called. Let's see. Yeah, I radius is correct. All right, so once we're there, we can put the pen back down, and then we can go ahead and draw in the, uh, the oval. So pen dot uh, draw oval, and then it was the width, which would be I radius, actually times two, because the way draw oval works, if you look at the API, is it goes by the bounding box. So for this ellipse, it wants to know how wide the total ellipse is and also how tall the total ellipse is. So us, it was twice the radius. And for height, I'll just do a proportion. So I radius times two, that's the total width. Oops, sorry. And then the other parameter required is the height. I'm going to say I radius times two and then times just whatever percentage we want. So if I say times 1.5, that's going to be 150% or 1.5 times a bit taller than wide. So I'll just stop there. And at this point, I want to test this out and just see if we're on the right track. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this. Um, I have an error to fix, so let me do that. I'm missing something. Let's see. Where is this guy? Missing semicolon. Fair enough. OK, I see semicolons in all these lines. I see, all right, I'll pause the video, did I miss a sketch? I'll pause the video, find my error, and come back in a sec. Aha, uh -huh. all right, so when I compile, it's actually not a semicolon. The problem is that I was copying the other code there. You can't say int and sketchpad. Like pad, it can't be both an integer and a sketchpad. It's gotta be one or the other. So in this case, it's a sketchpad, it's the data type. So these variables are all integers, and this variable pad is not an integer, it's a sketchpad object. And same here. I, you know, silly mistakes, just get used to them. They're going to happen all the time. All right, so now we're good. Compiling this, it compiles fine. So now let's build a driver to start testing this out and make sure we're on the right track. So back to the main BlueJ window, and let's build a cat driver. So new class, I'll call this cat driver. And inside, again, I was going to kill everything and just start over again. So since I called the class cat driver, it's got to be public class cat driver, spelled the exact same way with the same um, capitalization. Down here, we just need a main method because the main method is where all programs in Java start, at least for applications. So we've got public static void main string square brackets and then args end the method braces, and now we can do our work. So inside the driver, we want to create a cat object. And so we're gonna say, well, actually first we gotta decide which constructor do we want to use. So we have two constructors. We had a default constructor and we had a custom constructor. For now, let's just use the default constructor with no parameters. So my driver, I'm gonna say cat um, Felix, so I'll name him Felix, equals new cat and no parameters. So here we're using the default constructor. And now that Felix has been created, we can command Felix. Felix dot draw is the only command that Felix knows because we haven't really programmed any methods besides a draw method. And that's the one I want to test out anyway. So here we go. Let's compile this looking good. And now let's run the thing and see if we get the right thing. So head so far is good. Um, I did fill, so if it's drawing an eye here, I can't really see it. So let's go back in the code and don't fill the head in. So for cat, I said uh, fill apparently, just, just to change this to draw circle. We can do colors later on. All right, and let's just retry this thing. So compile, run, and hey, it's looking pretty good. All right, so I'm happy that the eye's in the right spot. And now I can make the left eye and the pupil. So let's go ahead and make the pupil first, then I'll copy that over to the left eye. And that'll explain why you don't want to just copy and paste your code because it's not as powerful as writing helper methods. So let's get the pupil in there and then go from there. 
All right, according to my sketch diagram, my um, like my draft, the pupil is going to go. Uh, I guess we'll put it in the center of the eyeball and just some proportion, you know, smaller. I think we already had pupil radius, so let's go there and do that. All right, so in the cat, which that code, I gotta find it, it is here. All right, in the cat code, draw the eyes. I'm gonna say this is draw the eye outline. And then we'll do draw the pupil next. And this is actually just for the left eye outline. So, man, that's gonna be annoying. Draw the left eye outline, and then here, this is draw the left pupil. This will be a good lesson on why you should not be doing it this way. Uh, though it works at first. All right, so let's pick the pen up, pen dot up, pick the thing up, and we want to move the pen from, actually, I take it back. The pens are already right here in the center because ovals are defined by the center. So really, we just need to draw the ellipse. All right, cool. So never mind picking the pen up. Let's just command it pen dot uh, draw oval and we already had a pupil radius right here so we'll use that and then again times two because it goes the ellipses go by the full width and then we'll say it's the same proportion that it's 1.5 times the uh, the width all right, so there's that, compile it. This time I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in. So I'm gonna say fill, fill oval, compile this, and let's see if we've got this working. All right, compiles, runs, and so far, excellent. We have half of our cat ball, cat eyeball, and now let's go do the other half and then explain why you do not want to just copy and paste all your code. So back to the cat. So this is all for the left-hand eyeball. And I think I'll throw the pupil in there. So left eye, we'll just put the pupil in here and add a comment. All right, I'll back up. I'll say it was fine before. So let's copy this stuff and then paste it in for the right eye. Oh geez, this whole time has been the right eye. All right, this is the right eye. That's the one we've been doing. I called it left, sorry. And now we're doing the left eye. So the difference really is that we go forward. So to get there, we're going to go forward from the center, then turn left 90 and go forward again. So that's really the only change in the code. So let me find my code and then we'll go there and change it. All right, here's a cat. So for the left eye, we go forward, we turn left this time, and then everything else is the same. So if I compile this and run it we should have two eyes let's just verify that in fact that is correct oops all right it is correct but I didn't put the pen back at the center for the other eyeball so let's go ahead and do that so between the right eye and the left eye I'm going to say uh, pen dot home which will reset the pen back to the starting point and that's what I was expecting when I was drawing, uh, writing out my code. All right, this time we should be good to go. All right, excellent, there it is. So, so far my picture is matching the idea that I had in mind, so this is great. And now let's explain how to make your code much easier than copying and pasting big sections of code. So the first way that you probably did draw house, unless you had intro Java last year, is you did everything inside of the draw method. And you had maybe comments explaining what you were doing. This is a great way to start. And so I encourage this to start with. You want to, as quickly as possible, move beyond this and instead start making helper methods. So helper methods are simply methods that replace specific code and can be repeated. Because here to draw two eyes, I had to copy and paste the code twice. And that's so silly. It'd be easier if there was simply a method called draw eye. So let's make one public uh, void and then draw i and let's pass in int x and int y that way we can specify through parameters where do we want the eyeball to be because if we have this method written then 
all this code because it's replaced by draw i and you tell it where. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the main parts here. So this is going to draw a general eyeball at centered wherever the heck you want. That's going to be the power of it. And we'll be able to reuse this method to draw as many eyes as we want. That's the cool thing. So instead of drawing the right eye, this just draws a, an eye outline in general. So get rid of the word right. This draws an eye outline no matter where you are. So forget moving the pen. Assume the person already is telling you where the pen should be. So pick the pen up, move the pen to the place the person wants. So pen.move to x comma y. And then put the pen down. So we've picked the pen up, moved it without dragging lines, put it down, and now at the desired location, we will go ahead and draw the outline of the eye, and we will draw the pupil of the eye. And so those can both stay. And now let's use this method to replace all that code we had before. So to use a method that you wrote in the same class, all you got to do is say the method name and pass in your parameters. So before we had all this code not needed anymore, now let's just say, so to draw the right eye, all we have to do now is say, draw eye and tell it where. So I'm going to say, draw eyeball, and then the x and y position I know is going to be, let's go back to our template, it's going to be um, over an amount of eye radius and up an amount of half the overall head radius. That's based on my picture. So over eye radius and up head radius uh, divided by 2. And to draw the left eye, it's the entire thing actually, we do the exact same thing and just delete all this code because it's so unnecessary now. Just say draw eye using your helper method and then also i radius. And actually, this one would be negative i radius because we're going to go left by that amount, but then up by the same uh, head radius. So essentially, one eye is drawn at positive x up, the other eye is drawn at negative x up. And we're using this much improved helper method to do all the work. Isn't this much, much cleaner and shorter than having all that code here? Look at this, this is so much easier to read, uh, at least in my opinion, than having all that messy code there. So let's compile this. Awesome, let's go run it and see if we got what we intended. So run, and perfect, there it is. So this is a much improved code. So that's the idea of this whole, uh, this whole assignment is that we want you to be writing helper methods that make the drawing and the coding much easier by writing a generalized method that has parameters. So I've done this for i, and I think at this point you kind of get the idea of what we're going for. So let me pause the video and think about the other talking points that I think will help you out. Because I don't want to just go on and on about the same thing over and over again. All right, back to my, uh, my lesson design here. So we had our driver, we did all of these things as well. When I say basic helper methods, what I mean was um, if you just had draw eye but didn't have parameters, and so if you have all this code here and you just copy and paste it into a helper method, that's what I mean by a basic helper method. You wouldn't have any parameters, and you'd have to have like draw left eye, and then no parameters, and then also you'd have to like copy and paste this entire thing and have a draw right eye. That's a very good start because you're breaking up this draw method into parts, and that's what I mean by basic helper methods. When I say generalized helper methods, I mean methods that have parameters, as we had here. Let me undo all this stuff. So this is a generalized meth helper method because it has at least some parameters which help you customize this and reuse it over and over again. And that's what I mean by a generalized helper method, one that you can use many times to accomplish the same task a bunch of times. All right, next let's do the nose and then focus on the whiskers because the whiskers also are um, a task that can be repeated uh, twice. But since they face opposite directions, it'll take a little more ingenuity to get them to work. So for nose, it's really just draw a circle. There's no reason to make a helper method for a one-line piece of code. So I'm going to say 
draw the nose. And that's just going to be put the pen there. Actually, you know what? I will make a helper method because then I can say where to draw the nose. So I actually I'm going to say draw nose and then at 0, 0 and with the, uh, the right radius. I guess that's already built into the variable. So we will say draw a nose at 0, 0. So this is the helper method I want to write. So down here, I'll define it. Public void, draw nose, then int x and int y. I could even add a color to this. If you want a certain color, you could add a color uh, attribute or parameter, but I'm not going to just yet. I'll do, we'll do colors later on. All right, so there's that. And then let's go ahead and just put in the code for this. So I'm gonna pick the pen up pen.up, pen.move to x comma y, and then put the pen back down. That way we don't drag lines there. And then pen dot, let's say, fill oval, and actually circle, fill circle. And then it was a nose radius. All right, so there's that. And finally, let's work on the whiskers, and then I might just stop there. So. For the whiskers, here's my idea. To have one method that can do both, I'm gonna say before you call draw whiskers, the pen has to be sitting where it should be, and it has to also be um, facing the direction either to the right or to the left. So whatever direction the pen is facing, the whiskers will draw in that particular direction. And so that has to be set up before using the method. Those are called preconditions of a method, things that you have to set up before. So my method will do this. If the pen is here and it's facing, let's say it's facing this direction, for example, then to draw a whisker, I'll simply say pen dot forward a certain length and then pen dot backwards to back up. Turn, let's say 30 degrees, pen dot forward, pen dot backwards. Turn left by 60, pen dot forward, pen dot backward. And then we'll have whiskers in the direction we're already facing. That's my idea. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so down here, public void, draw whiskers. Let's see. So I'm assuming the pen's already put where it needs to be put. And to let our users of the method know this, I'm going to put a little comment. This is a multi-line comment. And then I'm going to say precondition. OK. Warning. In order to use this method, you must first move the pen to the desired location and set its direction. And then the post condition is what's true after the method runs. Uh, three whiskers will be drawn with a 30 degree angle between them. Okay, three whiskers will be drawn at the pen's current location. with a three, third degree angle between them facing in the pen's uh, current direction. So that way, before someone goes to use the method, which is really us, we understand what we have to do first and then what the result of the method is. So back up here to my draw method, draw the whiskers, so now let's meet the precondition and move the pen to where it needs to be. So let's just say that the pen will be um, at the same horizontal position as the radius of the eye. So it's gonna be right below where the eyes are. And for the vertical position, let's go down maybe a quarter of the overall radius. I'm just choosing that. So that's what I'm going to do. So before drawing the whiskers, pen dot up, then pen dot move to, let's 
let's see, I said the x position was the same as the radius of the eyeballs, so um, eye radius, and the y position we said was down a quarter of the radius, so negative head radius divided by 4. That should work. Then we have to set the direction, pen dot set direction at 0 degrees because that will give us uh, whiskers facing to the right. And for the other whiskers, it'll be set to 180 degrees, which is left. So there's that. And then now we can say draw whiskers. And there's no parameters, at least not the way that I set it up. So let's say this is draw the right whiskers. We'll do the same thing to draw the left whiskers, except for it'll be at a different location. So this one will be left and down, set direction to 180, and then draw whiskers. All right, now this can be improved actually to be a one-liner, but for now it's fine. Well, let's see if it works. So compile, run, and oh, maybe I forgot to put the pen down. I don't see any lines, so let's go find the error here. Yeah, I put the pen up. I never put the pen back down, so that is the problem. So pen dot down. And now let's see. In fact, probably should make the pen thicker, actually. But we can just choose that later on. All right, compile, run. And still nothing. All right, I'll go back and find out what's wrong. Oh, yes. What's wrong is nothing. What's wrong is we simply didn't actually do draw whiskers yet. So... Let's fill in draw whiskers. So we were going to say the pen, if it's here facing to the right or whatever direction it's in, we're going to go forward the whisker length, come back, turn left by 30 degrees, go forward, come back, turn right by 60, forward and back. So here it goes. All right, here's my method. I've got the middle whisker was go starting wherever you are, out and back. Those are these two lines of code. Then clockwise, turn right, and so go out and back. Then counterclockwise, back up, and go out and right, or out and back. So let's compile this, make sure it runs, and this time I think we'll get it, but I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see. If we have errors, not a problem. Oh, there we go, cool. I can make the pen thicker, might look better, but still, we've got it working, so that's great. So we've got our cat uh, in good shape so far. Okay, now I'd like to add a color to the head, so let's add another attribute for not just head radius, but head color. So this will be a color uh, data type. Color and then head color. And you have two choices on initializing colors. So here we've got head color. All right, choice number one is you can use a hard-coded color. So if you go to Google, I'm going to search uh, Java Color API. Java Color API. Let me make my window smaller so you can see. So my search term was Java Color API. I'm going to click on it right here. And here are the predefined colors. And to use them, you will say capital color dot whatever, black, blue, brown. These are the predefined colors. Um, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use a custom color of my choice. And to do that, we use one of the constructors for colors. And so we're going to use this one here. This is the easiest one to use, I think. You specify how much red green and blue is in your color and you would say equals new color like 150 12 whatever so here goes that so head color equals new color then in our parentheses we specify three values but instead of guessing I'm gonna go online and find a color picker and get an exact value so search online for color picker color picker and let's just find the first one let's see if this works I don't like that one. I'm going to choose another one. Okay, let's try the second version. Okay, this is better. So I'm going to choose a color. I'm going to say this cat is um, purple. No, thank you. Uh, all right, turquoise. Fine. So over here, you can see the RGB values are right here. So 110 for red, 240 blue and or green, and 216 for blue. So let me copy those into 
blue jays, well, the color parameter. So it was 110 for red, and then 240 for green, and finally 216 for um, blue. So that's our custom color. And then when we go to draw the head, we're going to set the color of the pencil to that thing. So before we draw the head, now we're going to say fill circle. And before this, we got to set the color. So pen dot set color, then head color. And then after this, we're going to set it back to black. So pen dot set color, color dot black. And here I'm using one of the predefined colors that I showed you before. So that's how to use a predefined color. Otherwise, you got to say always make a color and initialize it using the color um, constructor like this guy. All right, let's go see what we've got. Oh, color's not a default class in Java, so you have to import it. So let me go back to the color API. Okay, at the top of any API is where to find the class. In this case, it's right here. It says to import this, you got to import java.awt.color, and there's no dot star. This is the class to import. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and import that. So in addition to gpdraw, we'll import java.awt.color, and that should take care of the cannot find symbol. All right, that's working fine. Well, let's go to compile and make sure our cat is now kind of turquoise colored. And it is, so awesome, we've got a colored cat. If you want the outline still, what you can do is draw a slightly bigger black circle on the bottom. Or you could just say draw circle afterwards. I think we'll say draw circle afterwards. So under cat, when we go to draw the head here. So this time we'll say draw the head because it's not an outline anymore. I will fill a circle, set the pen color back to black, and then I will draw a circle afterwards. I think this entire time this will all look way better if the drawing tool is actually a little bit thicker. So pen dot set width. Let's try four. I think this will just look better in general. All right, again, compiling, running. Let's see what we got. Yeah, so this definitely looks a lot better. So I like this look much better than before. All right, final thing, now that we have some colors working, is actually let's do our other constructor because so far I just had you hard code a color in there. So let's add color to this constructor. So int uh, head call, that's got to make it something different. So head color equals head call. All right, let's finish up by using this constructor to build a second cat that uses a custom attributes. So back to our driver to do that, wherever that is in my BlueJ windows, here it is. So we have Felix the cat is a default cat using the default constructor. And now we'll make a second cat. We'll call this guy um, Tom, will be a Tom cat. And for Tom, we're going to go ahead and use all the parameters from our second constructor. So let me get this open. I need to be able to see this at the same time as the driver so I can see what's where. In fact, I'll make this bigger so I can see all the attributes if possible. Well, we'll just scroll over when needed. All right, so here's my driver. And it looks like I have to pass in the head radius first, followed by eye radius, pupil radius, and so on. So, all right, cat draw head radius. Let's say this time, it's, I'll say the same size head as before, but eye radius, this time we'll make him, we we'll give him tiny eyes. So 50 for eye radius, pupil radius, actually I'll say uh, 45, very close to as big as the eyes. Nose radius, we'll give him a pretty big nose, like relatively anyway. Uh, mouth radius doesn't really matter. So I'll say negative one, only because we don't have one yet. Whisker length we do have, so let's say that is uh, how about tiny whiskers, little 50, little whiskers. And then from there, ear length, which doesn't matter. So I'm going to put negative one. Again, I'd put something else if it did matter. And head color, oh geez. Head color should be a color. 
that was an error before. And for head color, um, I'm going to go ahead and use a built-in color. So color dot uh, yellow. I think that's a built-in color. All right, compile this. Uh, color needs to be imported again, so let's do that. Import Java dot awt dot color. Okay, compile. All right, let's go see if we get a second cat and see if it looks uh, halfway decent or really interesting. I don't know. Okay, so there's our default cat, and over here is our custom kitty cat with a bigger nose, tiny whiskers, and a huge pupil. So pretty fun, pretty funny. Uh, one more change, perhaps. Our cat's always going to be centered. Well, we can fix that by passing in, at least to the second constructor, or maybe even the draw method, um, a place to draw. So in cat, we could update our draw method if we want to, to accept a location to draw. If we do this, we'll have to update really everything else. It won't be super straightforward, but just so you know, it would be convenient to say um, int x and int y, and then to be able to make everything relative to this. So that would be very convenient. And let's see. Yeah, in fact, I can do it here. So x plus this y plus that, and this would be everywhere really. That way it shifts things over by whatever amount you want. Okay, x plus, everywhere it's gonna be x plus and x minus plus. So y plus, draw whiskers. I think we're gonna have a problem with that. nose x plus y plus this may let's see right whisker no i think this is uh, enough basically we're just shifting everything over by x and y that actually might do it there so let's go and test this out i'm not completely convinced it's going to work but so now to draw, we'll still draw this at 0, 0, and this guy we're going to shift over, um, say negative 100, and then down 50 just to see if it moves over and down. Okay, compile the fine, and let's now go ahead and run the thing. Okay, so we still have this at 0, 0, and the other cat, everything's fine actually, except for the head itself has to be shifted over. So really. The only change I think I need to make is the head itself. Yeah, so I just filled the circle. I didn't actually pick the pen up and move it. So the only change here is to move the pen, um, pick the pen up, so pen.up, then pen.move to x comma y. That way it's centered where the head should be and then it continues to draw the stuff. So that should be the only change. And let's make sure that actually works. So still we've got our default cat centered, and that one's centered. I didn't put the pen back down, so let's put the pen down. All right, this time I think we're in good shape. At least I hope we are. All right, running this. Good job on the basic cat, and finally the other cat can be centered somewhere else. So now we could actually tell it to draw in different spots. And so at this point, here's why you would do this. So in the driver, we've got, let's make this guy actually tiny. So I'm gonna say 20, five, four, five, five, and still yellow. So it's crazy tiny, but we can say, Tom, draw yourself here. Don, Tom, draw yourself right there. Tom, draw yourself somewhere else, maybe positive. Uh, 40 and then down 50. So we can draw Tom in three different places, which will give us three kind of copies. Let's run this. So there's our basic default cat, and here is our tiny Tom drawn in three different places. 
If it was bigger, you could make out the features better. But the idea is that you have a customized method that can stamp multiple copies because you have parameters. And that's kind of part of the point behind the whole assignment. All right, people, there's a lot more we can customize. But for now, you have the basic idea of having lots of attributes to customize your shape and having really, I'd say, generalized help methods that repeat code so you don't have to like draw two eyes hard coded. You can draw one eye using a help method and then just call the help method multiple times to draw multiple eyeballs or multiple things that repeat themselves. So have a great day. I'll see you later.